ISIS, one of the preferred routing protocols of large service providers, has arrived in RouteOS. In this video, I will introduce you to ISIS and will explore how to configure it in my routing devices. We are going to have a lab where we are going to reach full IP connectivity between six different routers. My name is Wilmer Almazam and this is the Network Trip. Hello and welcome. So in this video, we'll go over ISIS. We are going to talk the basics about this routing protocol. And then in the upcoming weeks, we are going to have a full series on ISIS. But now, because MyRoti has added this functionality just a few hours ago, we need to start playing with it. We need to create our labs and we need to get familiar with this fantastic protocol. So at this point, you should be familiar with uh, the routing process in general, using static routes or using OFPF or BGP. But what is that of ISIS? If you don't have any other background than MyRotic, probably this is gonna be something pretty new for you. But ISIS stands for Intermediate System to Intermediate System. So what exactly is that? So basically, ISIS was created by the ISO. So yes, the same organization that created the OSI model. ISIS is heavily used by large service providers. So it's a lot uh, simpler than OFPF. We have uh, features that will allow a better scalability. So we'll be talking deeper about that in the upcoming videos. But now, we are going to say that ISIS is quite similar to OFPF in terms that this is also a link state protocol. So we are going to set a metric to our links and depending on that metric, ISIS is going to calculate the best path to reach a specific destination. So when we say intermediate system to intermediate system, basically we are talking about routers. So there are two terms that we need to get familiar with if we are working with ISIS. One is called the end system. So basically that is any host in the network that is not a router. And then we have the intermediate systems that are basically routers. So when we say ISIS, basically we're saying router to router, a simple protocol that will be talking between routers. Now that we understand that ISIS is a dynamic routing protocol that will allow to exchange routing information in our network, then we need to understand how we are going to configure that in router OS. So the step number one is that we need to create an instance. So basically an instance is the one that is going to create the ISIS process and we're going to set some general setting for that process. So there is some information that we must provide. So the first one is the system ID. You can think that the system ID is something similar to the router ID in OFPF, but now in ISIS it has a different syntax. So this is going to be a six byte value. And the format is going to be three different groups with four hexadecimal values each. So for example, so we have here a system ID that is one, 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 dot, one, 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 dot, one, 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 one. So basically three different groups with four values each. And then another value that we must provide the instance is the area. And here we are going to have something really interesting. And that is that in ISIS, a router belongs to an area. So for example, if I have here the area 10, then we're going to put the full router in the area. So let's say that I have those two routers. And then, for example, if I have the area 20, we'll have another router here so it can be connected. So that's different than OFPF. Because if you remember, in OFPF, the ones that are mapped to areas are the interfaces, not the routers. So for example, in OFPF, we will have something like this. So we have one router here, we have one router there, and then we can come here and we're going to say, okay, this interface belongs to area one. And then if this router has all the interfaces in area one, 
we are going to say that this is an internal router. And then here we have the area one. But this is also going to be connected to the backbone. And then here we are going to have the backbone. So the router is actually not inside a specific area. The ones that are mapped to areas are the interfaces. In ISIS, that is not the case. So the router is going to be inside an area. Like in this case, the router belongs to area 10, this one belongs to area 10, and this one belongs to area 20. So the first concept that is going to be different between ISIS and OFPF. And that is why in the instance is where we're going to set that area. So the area ID is also going to be with a different syntax than OFPF. We are going to have from 2 to 13 bytes. And we are going to have two values. And then optionally, we are going to have up to six groups with four values each. For example, we can have something like that. Or we can have something like that. Basically, here we can have up to six groups. For my lab, I will keep this simple and I'm going to use an area that is going to start with 49 and then I will have four hexadecimal values coming after that 49. So why 49? So what is that 49? That's a value that has been reserved by IANA to identify the protocol in the network layer. And basically 49 is for IP. So if we see that 49. Basically, that means that we're going to find IP. Remember, this is not mandatory. So you can have, for example, 0, 1, and that's fine. But if we want to follow best practices, and if we are going to be in a multi-vendor environment, most likely you will be using 49, then dot, and then optionally, you can have one or up to six groups of four hexadecimal values each. So basically, those are the values that are mandatory, the system ID and the area. And then if we are going to redistribute the default route, also in the instance, we can do something like L2, originate default, if installed. So I'm going to talk about what is exactly that L2, just in a bit, because in ISIS, to perform the intra and the inter-area routing, we are going to use level 1 and level 2. So you need to be aware about what exactly is that. So once we have defined the instance, the next step is going to be to create the interface template. So the interface template is simply a mapping between the interfaces and the ISIS instance. But additionally, we need to select a routing level. And this is going to be quite important. So we're going to have level 1, we're going to have level 2, and another one is level 1, level 2. Level 1 is within an area. So you remember, for example, in OFPF, you have routers that are in the same area. They will have a common database. So that is going to be quite similar here. Okay, to understand this concept of L1, L2, and L1, L2 adjacencies, we are going to explore the topology that we have in the whiteboard now. So you remember in OFPF, all the different areas must be connected to the backbone area or area zero. So that concept doesn't exist here in ISIS. But it's still, there is a concept that is called the backbone of the network. So let's talk about the backbone of the network. So the backbone is basically the level two routing. So if we have a sequence or a chain of routers that have level 2 routing, basically they create the backbone of the network. So for example, if I check this diagram, so I can say, okay, I'm going to have the backbone in all the sides. So you can see that now the backbone is not just a single area. So that's different than OFPF, because in OFPF, the backbone is the area 0. With ISIS, the backbone is not just for one area. So we can have multiple areas. But as long as we get routers in level 2, all of that chain will be the backbone. So for example, if I want to have all those devices working as the backbone, I will have 
level 2 routing. So for example here we'll have level 2 routing, level 2 routing, and level 2 routing. But then if we check the area 15, so we can see here that this device and that device have some networks. So commonly we are not going to find those networks in the backbone. They will be a network for end use. But assuming that we have that scenario, then also we need to have a database for that information that is going to be inside that area. And then we can define that link here as level 1, level 2. And this one here, level 1, level 1. So what is going to happen here is that this router and that router, they will have one database for level 1 and another database for level 2. The level 1 database is going to be used to send traffic inside the area. So if we are going from C to D, then that is going to be using that L1 information. But then once we are getting connected to a different area, to a router in a different area, so level 1 is not going to work. So if, even if I set here level 1, level 2, there is only going to be one adjacency that is going to be level 2 because level 2 is for different areas. So here we're going to have level 2 information. This device here is responsible for adding that information into the backbone. And then it's going to take, for example, the information from E, the information from D that is in the level 1 database and going to inject that into the level 2 database. And then R2 is going to have that into its level 2 database. But then we can see here that we have R1 that is kind of at the edge of the network. So in this case, actually, we don't need to have level 2 because that is not part of the backbone. So we can simply have level 1 adjacency. We're going to have everything inside that area as level 1. So all the information that is coming from different areas, now R2 has to put that information into level 1. But it's not going to inject all the routing information. It's simply going to inject a default route. And that's how R1 will be able to talk to the rest of the networks. And the same thing is going to happen here on that device. So that device is going to inject the information into the level 2 database because that router has a database for level 2. But then here we can have level 1 routing and this device is going to inject that information here but this is going to be just the default route. So basically you can see that we are going to design the backbone and we are going to have a chain of level 2 adjacencies but then we are going to have some adjacencies that will be only level 1. This is going to be quite similar to the stubby areas that we find in OFPF. So the concept is a little bit different, but the idea is the same. We are injecting a default route. So we're going to go deeper on those specific details in the series that we're going to have here in the channel. So we have here those devices. They will exchange some hello messages. They will build the adjacency. So let's say that we're going to have a layer, a level one adjacency between those devices. So we have the network A, we have the network B. So basically every router is going to create a message that is called the LSP. So the link state packet. And this is going to contain information about that router. So in this case, R1. It's going to contain information about the networks that are connected in the device. So basically that is going to be similar to the LSA1 of the router LSA that we find in OFPF. So now let's talk about our topology. So in my topology, I'm going to have three areas. So I'm going to follow the format that I have explained before. So the area will start with 49, the value reserved by IANA for IP, and then dot 0001, 0002, 0003. And we have two routers in every area. And you can see that here inside the rectangle, we have the backbone. So now you can see that this is expanding beyond just one area. So now we have routers that belong to area 1, 2, and 3 that are in the backbone. So that's completely different than OFPF. In between every router, I'm specifying the type of adjacency that they will have. 
So we can see that here in the backbone, we only have a level two adjacency. And then on area one and area three, we're gonna have some local area networks. And here we're gonna have level one adjacency. So what is gonna happen here is that R3 is gonna have a level one database. It's gonna have a level two database. The level one database is gonna have information about all the area. And then if we have route inside that area, it's gonna use the level one database. It's going to inject that information to the level two routing. And then that information is going to travel across the backbone. So all the routers in the backbone will be able to see every individual network. But once R5 is going to inject that information here, because here we have a level one adjacency, this is simply going to inject a default route. And the same thing is going to happen if we go from left to right. So the whole point of this lab is that we are going to have full IP connectivity between the local area networks in area one and area three. And additionally, we're going to have an internet connection. We'll be able to inject the default route and those devices will be able to access the internet. Now we are ready with the basics. We have understood our lab environment. In the next video that is already posted here on YouTube, you will be able to configure every individual device.